Uh, my name is Jonathan Ott. I'm trained as a chemist, but basically I'm an entheobotanist and psychonaut now. I work on field work and some laboratory work independently. You've also published a number of books, and uh, one of them is a sort of an encyclopedia, is it not, of, of all the various kind of psychoactive drugs that, that you've been researching over the years. Well, the book far you're referring to is Pharmacotheon. It's, I guess it's kind of encyclopedic, but it's only about vision plants. It's not about uh, other psychoactive um, compounds and plants, although there, many of them are mentioned there. But it's really about shamanic inebriants or vision plants, what I call entheogens. What is it that, um, I mean, where, where does your inspiration come from in relation to researching these, uh, the, the, these substances and, you know, getting, because as I understand it, you're getting really in touch with the origins, the primitive um, way that these things were used. Well, the inspiration comes from the plants themselves and the experiences that I have on them. I feel that I have a vocation for what I do, and I don't really know where it comes from, but I guess you could say indirectly or directly from the plants themselves. Um, what, what, tell me about your, your life in the States, because you, you're based in the States, aren't you, first of all? You no, I haven't lived in the U.S. for 10 years, and uh, I wouldn't live in the U.S. the way it is now because of the uh, legal situation uh, on the drug war and also the... I don't support the U.S. foreign policy, so I don't wish to pay taxes to support that. Whereabouts are you based? In Mexico. And um, I, I, have you have you got an institute there? Are you are you working, you know, independently there in Mexico? Yeah, I just have my home there, and I have a country home with enough land to grow plants that I'm interested in. I have my own laboratory. I have a small chemical business and a, a very good library. And uh, I've always worked on my own. I've never been involved with an institute or a company or any other organization. I have my own small companies. What's your impression of, uh, of the conference uh, here in Amsterdam? Well, it's a very good conference. Uh, uh, I'm really happy. The place is beautiful and a really interesting group of speakers and a very interesting public as well. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into um, what, 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 the, what the function of these psychoactive um, uh, substances are? In, in what context? In, let's say in the human context. I've heard a lot of talk about the therapeutic uses of psychoactive um, elements and also you know, sort of the, the ritual, ritualistic function of them. Well, I'm not a, neither a partisan nor a, a practitioner nor especially uh, an expert on those aspects, but I think uh, basically in the traditional world and in the modern world you have uh, three or four basic contexts of use. One you could say would be ritual, and in the traditional world there's a certain amount of overlap between these and much less so in the non-traditional, but you have the you have ritual, you have therapeutic, uh, you have what I would call psychonautic or meditative or inner voyaging or self-actualization, and then you have the purely lootable or what some would call recreational function. And, and people that uh, tend to exaggerate their ideas about traditional cultures and, and supposing that there's something especially sacrosanct about these plants so much so that their use is only confined to certain very circumscribed ritual structures and that's not true. Uh, the, the shamanic world, uh, the traditional world and what we know, we know quite a bit about it historically from Mesoamerica where I reside there's definitely a place for the lootable use as well and the, the ritual uh, what would be classified as ritual use would in some cases be not greatly different from what would be a rave today for example and that was true in ancient Greece as well so for example the psilocybin mushrooms might have been used in in therapy and healing um, they might have been used in a type of a spiritual quest but they were also certainly used for example to celebrate business success uh, and also used in a mass celebration uh, party situation to celebrate the coronation of an emperor. And I say there's a certain blurring because in the traditional world that is also a sacred context. But it looks from the surface uh, for us 
it wouldn't be a sacred context, it would be a very lootable one because the only analog we have would be a rock concert or a rave, certainly not the kind of thing you would see in a Catholic church or a Jewish synagogue or in a, uh, uh, a Muslim mosque. I mean, I've heard these substances being talked about as helping us to get out of the rigidity of our normal routines. Is that how you understand it as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just escaping rigidity in general, hierarchy, structure, uh, internally and externally. They tend to make people think more for themselves and slough off programming that they have from wherever. Why do you think governments, I mean, you've mentioned about the American drug policy, for example. Why are governments so threatened by these apparently, I mean, scientifically, they seem to be quite harmless. They don't seem to be so toxic to the human body, not as toxic as alcohol and tobacco, I've heard. Why, why are governments so threatened by them? Well, they're not threatened by the drugs. They're threatened by, by people and what they think that the drugs will do to people. Their whole goal is to control and they're selling a particular program to maintain their level of control and maintain allegiance and fealty to that. And uh, they're more afraid of what, just what we were talking about, that people will start thinking for themselves and not pay so much attention uh, unquestioningly to the programming that they've been given. And that's the threat to them. It, the war is on people, it's not on drugs. It's interesting that in, in the 60s with uh, Timothy Leary, Richard Alpitz and so forth, um, th there was a sort of a general belief that there was a cultural revolution going on and that once everybody had dropped LSD, society was going to change. What do you think happened to that? Uh, well, I don't think it, anything happened to it. It just continued and it still continues. There hasn't really been any... We talk about the psychedelic 60s and everything. It didn't go away. It just became more less visible and less of a scapegoated uh, entity in the mass media and so forth. But there's more use now than there was then, both per capita and in, in uh, terms of overall numbers. It's just that it's not so stigmatized anymore and that we should be thankful for that. The situation is actually quite a bit better now than it was then. Last question now, um, how do you understand um, heroin in relation to psychoactive drugs? Drugs. I realize they're two very different things. Have you got a comment about people that get stuck into, you know, with heroin as, as a form of escapism? No, I don't think it's any, they're, they're separate things and I don't think heroin is any different. Uh, I'm not a, uh, a chauvinist about these substances and I have my own particular tastes and predilections and I don't judge other people's tastes and predilections and I don't support the idea that uh, there is something fundamentally different between vision plants and, ma and marijuana that, that, uh, that doesn't apply to, to opiates of which heroin is the most notorious but it's just the tip of the iceberg and uh, the problem we have with heroin is that it is scapegoated and, and that's in the public eye now the way it was mar marijuana and LSD were at another time and uh, we should be very careful to dismiss uh, other people's pleasures. And uh, personally, I don't think the, the problem with heroin is that it's illegal. That's uh, the same problem that we have with all these drugs. There's no particular problem with heroin. In fact, it's uh, quite a bit safer than a lot of the other illegal drugs that people take and think are, are safe in comparison with alcohol, tobacco, heroin. It usually gets lumped in with alcohol and tobacco, and it's far safer than either of them. Okay, well, that's great. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, you're welcome.